Hello, I'm Duncan Massey. I'm one of the medical fellows of this college. I'm a director of studies for the second year. I came to Keys in 1994. Um, I was actually interviewed in this room and I was taught at this desk in a different room. This room is currently an amalgamation of uh, a number of medical fellows who've come through the college and bit by bit their, uh, their things <coughs> have found themselves in one place. This is very much the medical teaching room. It's used at least five days a week, often in the evening because uh, a lot of our supervisors are clinicians who have day jobs like myself. Um, and so our medical students are quite used to having these long days where they'll have lectures and practicals during the day and they'll come to rooms like this uh, to have their hour-long supervisions. Um, and this room uh, will host a number of different subjects. I teach physiology here, uh, we've had head and neck anatomy, we've had um, uh, human reproduction and neurophysiology. The room contains uh, a number of resources that are quite useful, I think, to the different supervisors who come here, uh, including the books and also the props. Um, so just here, for example, are a number of props, which, although they may look like a collection of random objects, are actually of use in the various supervisions we do. This is obviously a model of the heart. It's the only useful thing I got out of a, a drug rep. Uh, that just shows the sort of spiral nature of the heart, uh, and that will give some clues as to how it contracts. Oh, this is a general post office relay and this is a transatlantic cable, but they are both useful engineering analogies to how nerves work. Well, this is an optic from a bar, but it's quite good to show how muscles work to both contract, hold a position and also have a controlled extension through movements that students will clearly be familiar with. Maybe a word or two about the portraits generously loaned to us uh, by, the, uh, by the college uh, for use in this room. So butts, uh, probably the oldest, painting here. Physician to Henry VIII, uh, he of course attended Gonville Hall. Uh, it was not Gonville and Keys back then. Next to him here uh, is a copy of the Royal College of Physicians portrait of William Harvey, uh, perhaps the most famous Keen of all. He of course overturned over a millennium uh, of thinking about the circulation. This is Thomas Clifford Albert, a Keen who invented the modern thermometer. And here is Sir George Paget, who introduced the bedside clinical exam to medical finals uh, and was Regis Professor of Physic here. OK, I'm just going to show you the, the medical library in here because it's quite a useful resource. Um, so in here, um, there's a couple of things. First of all, uh, without wishing to alarm any prospective students, these folders down here uh, represent my entire medical degree in terms of the handouts, the notes I took in lectures, the revision notes, all the way up to clinical notes uh, on the right here. There's, you really should not underestimate the amount of work involved uh, in doing a medical degree. These are uh, all the textbooks uh, that are available to students both here and in the library. Uh, and these represent, certainly up to here, all the, the key medical texts that you may call upon uh, when doing your degree. Uh, these texts here are the primary resources for Carpenter's Neurophysiology, which is the key uh, textbook uh, for neuroscience in the second year. Um, but these would have been Roger Carpenter's primary uh, sources uh, when he wrote the first edition um, some 30 years ago. In here is a rather unique library on decision-making and probability. Um, Roger Carpenter's very last book, which was uh, published uh, some years after his death, uh, was on the model he came up with for how we make decisions. Uh, he called it later. And one of the things he was um, interested in was why decisions take so long. Why is there so much neurological uncertainty? Uh, and so this small book, of which all of these books here formed the, uh, the primary references, uh, gives some sort of insight into that. R2-D2 is clearly slightly tongue-in-cheek. I actually bought him when I was a medical student. He's a soap dispenser uh, that was bought for four pounds from Sainsbury's, but he's actually a very good model. A number of the objects here uh, are clearly just of interest. They are interesting things that students may look at and think, oh, I wonder what that is. Some do have some sort of meaning. This here is, I call him the ever-present tiger. Um, here's a metaphor for homeostasis. Uh, in the very first supervision we do, 
We discuss how homeostasis isn't something that you just switch on when something's broken to fix things, like calling a plumber. It's something that happens all the time. It is a continuous process. In fact, uh, one of the things we conclude in our first supervision is that life is homeostasis, the process of avoiding falling to pieces. Uh, so hence, our ever-present tiger. We are forever running to stand still. This is a piece of fun that belonged to the late Roger Carpenter and uh, remains in the possession of the Carpenter family. This is a thesis generator. What it actually is, is a trade simulator, a sort of desktop gambling machine from the era of Prohibition. So it's a rather nice piece of Art Deco uh, furniture. What Roger did was replace the reels with random words which can form very plausible titles. So if we just give it a spin and see what it comes up with. Here we are, J.S. Mill and the tradition of sensibility in a London suburb. Let's try another one. Uh, and here we had Goethe and the images of authority in medieval Norway. I think it's absolutely brilliant. I think one of the strengths of the Cambridge supervision system is that it is small group teaching around tables like this in a very intimate setting. And as often as not, although we have technology such as this at our disposal, a lot of it will come down to ideas written out on paper. Um, often I will give students paper and say, you write down uh, what you think the answer is, draw something, perhaps in a discourse about the, the way we would do diagrams uh, in Tripos essays. And I think the whole atmosphere just lends itself uh, to that kind of academic discussion. One of the reasons I think why we have two tables in here is this is ideal for groups of three or four. Sometimes people might have a larger supervision group, especially for revision supervisions, and we can fit more people in here. In fact, this is the only room, really, that can accommodate all of the medical year. We admit 25 medics a year, uh, and for special occasions, we will bring them in here for pre-prandials, uh, another important part uh, of, the, of the college life.